faith. In other words, I came down here on earth to show you how it's done. Even the power of the Apostle Paul didn't have enough strength to show you that what I was doing. He was just really the closest relic to what I designed to do. But even Paul, in the midst of his discoveries, we found out he got tangled up in the work of Romans chapter 7 because he was set still in the flesh just as we are. And as Romans comes back, we want to get off of John 24. We talk about Romans. We always talk about how the process of in Romans 3, around that area, of Romans 3 and 10 to 12, talks about that, how we all go on the straight. There's not one right, and that's true to the fact. And it goes over in the book of Romans 3 and 23. He says we all have fallen short. There's something in our life. And this is one of the subjects I'm getting at. But when I come out, Lord, how do I stay out? Now, I want to forsake the word that we're dealing with over here in the book of uh, John. In the 21st chapter, I'm talking about the process of how Simon Peter began to uh, go back to doing what God pulled him out from doing. He, he, the, the word desired to plead that, that we as been men of God in the season which we're in, we're no longer to be fishermen, or we're no longer to be doers of the work we're doing, even though God wants to come together and leave away the former things and not, not the thieves should not thieve anymore, as it says in the book of Ephesians, that he should go out and be a person who gained an honest living. So when he needs something, he has the very money to buy what he needs and when he need to present it to himself uh, at the time he need it. In other words, so whatever things you need to keep yourself in position, uh, keep yourself uh, in that area of whether it be a car, home, house, whatever it may be. You know, he gives you the pleasures also. We get the little clothes and uh, little sneakers you see his kids buy, but they got to work for it. You know, you got to be able to have to earn the, you know, the Bible tells us if a man don't work, he don't eat, but that is a work term. But we got to understand right here also, but when God brings you out, it's not for you to just have the pleasures of the world. It's not for you to go out and just have the money and spend it lavishly in such a way that you forget about him. The one who raises you up every morning, and he declared that you say, you know, you know the model prayer, and our Father who art in heaven, how there be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done uh, on earth as it is in heaven. In other words, we as being men and women of God, as we rise up every morning, we're not getting up on our own reconstance, our own strength. There's a creator who designed and engineered us to be able to be the, uh, the, to do the work that he called us to do while we're in the earth. We go to college, we go to trades, we learn things, and we get different kind of formats and degrees, and we go out there and we're going to work for us. And then we begin to become more part of the world than the more the part of the Lord. And now Peter begins to look at this situation also, this situation also, excuse me, has been a worker, has been a fisherman. But now he sees some of the things that were lacked, and he uh, continued to go back and he began to find out as he sat there and twiddled his fingers, and he forgot all about what Christ has showed him. Guys, give me a second, just a moment. I want to kind of get some quietness in the background here. I want to kind of get my studio door shut out. Give me just a minute here. We're right back in the shadow. I want to make sure we're right back in the saddle. Excuse me. Make sure we want to get this word as clear, clear as we can. But we talk about over here in the third chapter of John. So many other verses we're going to deal with. How God brings you out is never designed for you to go back. Even we talk about First Corinthians or Second Corinthians five seventeen. If any man to be in Christ is a new creature, all old things are passed by. So many things that God has given us as being men of gain to have demonstration to understand and realize that once God brings us out of something, that we're never designed to go backwards. He never designed us to go back on anything he designed us to do. He said every word that proceeds out of his mouth goes forth. And when God said every word that proceeds out of his mouth goes forth, it's just like he said in Isaiah 55, 11. It moves with the vengeance. He says, according to Numbers 23, 19 to 21, Am I God that I should lie? Or am I a son of any piece of a flush that I have to repent? God doesn't depend on what men say. He depends on what the Spirit has given unto man that may be obedient to the one who's over him. As God command a word in our life, we're to go forth and declare the decree that everything that God has designed us to do in the earth is according to his will, his purpose, and his power. What we see over in the book of uh over in the book of uh, uh, John, and we look at the book of John, we see some things over in the book of John. We talk about some things that was going on here. I want to say hello to the young woman of God, uh, Lady DJ. I guess she kind of popped in on the scene and caught her setting up there, and I hope she's getting a good word out of this, what we talk about on tonight. Of course, she DJ some of that Christian music for me. <laughs> that would be a good thing that she can do. God bless her So Thank you for joining with me, uh, woman of God. Uh, lady DJ, but it goes over the grunts again back on the book of John. We look at the John, we'll say focus here on the word that we're speaking about here. Over in the book of John, chapter 3, it says, Simon Peter says unto them, Go out and go to fishing. 
In other words, he's getting into his own self. You know, he's getting a little rebellious here after God has showed him everything he's supposed to do through the Jesus Christ. Well, God through Jesus Christ, the Son, the Trinity, and all one. And he goes out and he tells him, you know, I, I'm going to go fishing. And it's amazing how you get around certain people that will amaze you and pull you in the opposite direction. You, just, you, you We look at the subject of what we talk about. How do I come out? How do God bring me out? And no, if I come out, how do I stay out? Well, the word of God declares is guilty by association. Most of all of us, whoever got into trouble, it was with somebody we was with. <laughs> and maybe we didn't want to do it, but we was influenced and we was tempted to go on and do that. And we see right over here in the book of John, chapter 3, clearly says in the book, in front of your eyes and my eyes, it says, see that Simon Peter said, I'll go to fishing. Now, what is that saying right there just in the first part, I'll go to fishing? He was rebelling against the very thing that Christ has called him to do. Jesus declared the creed according to Simon Peter, you'll no longer be fishing of fishermen of fish, but you'll be fishing of men. I ain't telling you to go out and gut the fish, Peter. I'm telling you to bring the fish that then be gutted through the presence of the power of the Holy Spirit. That when I begin to do the fish fry on them, it'll be a power through the Holy Ghost that no man can change. And one thing we do in the body of Christ, we want to gut the fish. In other words, we go out and look at everybody else's problems with our own problems. We're supposed to bring all our problems before God. The word of God declares to cast all your cares upon me, and I'm the one to care for you. As God put a man in the house of God to be able to be the minister of that house, whatever it may be, prophet, apostle, teacher, evangelist, no better than anybody else, all on the same level, all on the same field. If you think about an athletic team, everybody on the team is a kind to come together to do job as one. Nobody's greater than anybody, be you bishop, apostle, whatever, it doesn't matter. You all designed to do the same work. And one thing I can say about the man over at Victory Outreach, Jesse Perez, he said something so clearly about a week ago. Everybody goes in the ground has got the same size hole for their soul. Nobody gets a lavish piece of rock on the top and make them seem better than anybody else. Unless you pull the rock off the top, the hole is the same size. So it doesn't matter who you are, what position you have, but you're respected as being the man who you can respect on too. Peter in this position as being a man of God knew that God showed him what he's supposed to be doing. But in the midst of God, the uh, midst of Jesus Christ going before Cephas and going the process of his death and going to raise up in three days, 72 hours exactly, he's going to have all power in the palm of his hand. Peter begins to set down. He begins to twirl his fingers. Let's look what he says a bit closer that Peter says it. And we're going to go to Amplified Version and see some more now. Peter says like this in verse 3. Simon Peter said that to him, I'll go fishing. We know that's a rebellion right there. Because God never called him to continue to do the job he was doing, manual fishing. He wanted to do the fishing of the kingdom. Now, people say, well, Pastor, am I not supposed to work? Of course you're supposed to work. Your job is one of the best places you can go fishing at in the name of Jesus. Why you're making money and getting the insurance and buying your house and your car and getting whatever you need. Am I in there anywhere with anybody? The word of God says, I'll go to fishing. And they said unto him, okay, also we'll go fishing with thee. And they went forth and they entered into the ship. Best, worstest mistake they ever could have done as followed Peter into that ship. That was a rebellious walk. This is why I'm saying you're guilty by association. I remember when I was a young kid and there was a lot of young older guys was on the block and I used to watch them do things. They would go in the corner, they would smoke that stuff, they would do that beer. But it was something about it and have a desire to do that. You know, there was good mentors also. They showed us a lot of things that we're not supposed to do. They showed us a lot of way to do you know, just live life. And we get to go do something that they were doing. They said, don't do that. It ain't no good for you. But I see them doing it. And I begin to catch hold to it. I begin to think about it. If they doing it, and they're telling us not to do it. It must be something they know about what it's going to do to them as they get older. And I begin to think about that. Most of all the guys I've seen do all that stuff, they have gone past on to be with the Lord or they suffer into serious conditions in their body. And you got to understand, if you keep putting that kind of stuff down your throat, it's not designed for your body to be that way. It's a matter of time because I'm telling you something. It's amazing when we yet get it and we got the danger sign right there on the label. We got the danger sign right there on the cigarettes telling us. And then we go to him knowledge. We get a bad word. And then we want to boo-hoo and cry with people to feel sorry. But no, I mean, no, no, hold on a second. You had a chance to come out of what you're doing. The, the writing that was on the wall. We think about the book of Habakkuk and he talks about the process of his vision over in Habakkuk 1 and 2. He complained if I can get off track here for a minute, about the people who was around them, about the wicked people that had it going on. God had to bring a buckle back into position and say, buckle, look here. You need to write the vision to make it plain for all the seed that they may run with it. This is the same thing God is telling you. The only way you're going to run with the vision that God has given you, according to Jeremiah 1 and 5, before you was created, before you was performed, before you was designed, before you was engineered, God gave you a gift. If you lose that gift, it ain't nobody's fault but yours. Can't nobody stop you but you. Peter took more people along with him during the course of time of his rebellion. He said, I'm going to fishing. And they got, they got in the ship, immediately they entered into the ship. And they said, that night they caught nothing. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. I want to tell you something. Whenever you're doing against the will of God, you forget about anything happening good for you. 
because it's not according to what God wanted you to be. When God got a plan for your life, according to Jeremiah 29 and 11, he said only he know the thoughts. And he know the plans that he got for you. They're good and not evil. Can I say it again? Why am I const- Why am I still falling into the same thing, bumping my head, complaining about the knots on my head, and I'm not comp- and I'm not falling in the way that Christ wants me to fall? Well, let me just put it like this. You just can't keep on being rebellious against Christ, doing things your way. It's a coming time. I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, you better hear me when I say this. It's coming time. You're going to look at all the things around you. You're going to look at all the accomplishments that you have. And one day you got to realize that's all going to go away. There's a hole that's waiting on every one of us. And we got to make sure we get our soul right. If we don't get our soul right, there's a place that's called Hades. It's not the actual place where we go that's going to be hell, but it's a holding tank that's severely to the point of punishment. That even when you're there, God is yet in a position trying to find out how he's going to bring our crazy selves out because we lack the opportunity to hear on earth. Well, I look at it like this, not saying shame about anything about it. I remember the Holy Spirit got me in a room one night. He said, Pastor Ellis, let me show you something. What did you do or what are you doing with the life I gave you? And what are you doing with the gift I gave you? In other words, are you using your gift for the world? Or are you using it for God? There's a lot of people out there, men and women, God, don't, don't, don't look at me because I'm telling you, I ain't no saint. And I, I admit that. Even our pastor, a nice ministry, and I'm a, world, I'm a world-renowned pastor for the Nazar who listen. But look at me, I ain't no saint. Because you know why I ain't no saint? Because I know I walk right with Christ, but I know I'm not free from every sin there is. Let me, let me, let me show you something. Let's stay with let's stay with First Peter three. I, I want to show you something here, and I dare anybody on the line to be able to come against us. Whether you come through the the chat line or whatever, I want you to show you something here in this area of scripture. Let's go to the book of, and y'all know I'm probably going to go over the book of Corinthians. I mean, not Corinthians, but Galatians. You know, it's always talking about the things that we got in us because I parallels it with the book of Romans three, you know, ten through eleven. 10 to 12, and then I come back with that there at verse 23. We all for sure. We all got something. Ladies and gentlemen, as long as we're still in the flesh, we're fighting. It's an ongoing fight all day long, every day, all day. We got to fight the good fight of faith. As the word of God declares and decrees over in the, uh, Galatians chapter 5, he talks about the walking in the spirit. Or in verse 16, he said, walk in the spirit does you not fulfill the lust of the flesh before the flesh lust sith. It's an ongoing thing against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. But these are contrary. There's a division there. Your life with Christ and then your life with Satan or your life with the world is like oil and water. You can mix it all day long, baby. It'll never mix. You can play in it all day long, but there'll constantly be a separation. And I believe Satan is like the oil. Not saying it's negative, but I'm using it as an example here. And you're like the water, which bore forth the very quench of your thirst that God says, which is the word of God. He said that one should not do that they wish, they cannot do to each other. Now, notice what said in the 17th verse, that the flesh lusts it. It's an, ongoing, it's an ongoing attack against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And now he said already, these are quadrants. It's a divisional thing that's going on here. That one, the other, that they, should, that they cannot do the things that they would. They battling against each other. I want to go out and have a drink. I want to do lustful desires. I want to say nasty things. I want to have a bad mouth. I'm just being transparent with you, ladies and gentlemen. The Bible said bitter sweet can't come out of the same fountain. You can't say up there and say you love the Lord and wonder why. You're getting slapped beside your head by Satan because you're still living a schizophrenic life with Dr. Jekyll. And I ain't trying to judge anybody because I'm telling you the same things that happened to me. I was actually in the house of God saying I love the Lord, but at the same time I'm out doing things that I'm not supposed to be doing behind closed doors. Am I talking to somebody this night? I believe I'm saying something. See, most pastors want to get online and tell you what the scripture said, but I'm going to bring it to you clear through the spirit that God says there's not one right, not none. Even when we talk about the process of Peter over in that verse 21, chapter 21, over in the book of John, he knew that God showed him the way he's supposed to move. He knew exactly the way he's supposed to go. But I'm telling you, but, but the companion of fools, the rebellion, it's always going to be the people to pull you away from what God designed you to be. Everything looks good to us outside the will of God. But when we come to the presence of God, there seems to be a problem in obedience. Notice what he says once again in the 18th verse. That, but if you're led by the Spirit, am I, did I say something there? You're not under the law. What is the Spirit's law against the law of the Lord? 
The Bible says it's a prince of this world. Okay, yeah, okay, y'all want to? Y'all, we're not getting on that. Let's 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 stay right in Galatians. Let's look at something else. Let's go to the Book of Ephesians, so that all of us, we all was jacked up, tore up from the floor, up, and need a checkup from the neck up. Me, you, and everybody else. Bill Winston, T.D. Jake, all of us was out there. All of us was messed up and tore up. All of us had something going. We need a body. Every one of us was jacked up somewhere in our life, but through constant prayer. Of our, of our overseers and looking over us and keeping us lined up with the word of God, we continue to prevail, not being free totally, but we continue to walk with God, knowing that God's got a plan for our life.